Doodle Bud here. My print just finished. This was about a 17 hour print that I ran overnight. I'm anxious to pop the cover and give it a look because what I'm doing in this video, I'm gonna give you a rundown from a user experience of the Hay Gears Reflex system. I really enjoy 3D printing and my first printer was a different resin printer and I didn't like the experience at all, so I switched completely to FDM. But when Hay Gears reached out to me and told me about their system and how it works, how they have the wash station, the cure station, and the software to take all the guesswork out, I figured I'd give it a try. So I have a few resins I've been using, a few projects I've been doing, and I just finished this one. Let's pop the cover. This one is taking up the entire build volume and it looks like it turned out quite well. This is a part I designed. I've been meaning to make one of these for a long time. Let me show you with the part it's replacing. This is the little storage box organizer bit that goes in the center console, the armrest of my car. And from day one, it's never fit in there properly. It falls, it twists over, and they just didn't draw it properly. Like the dimensions are wrong. So I've been dealing with this for a long time and I figured now's the perfect time to make one. So I set myself a design challenge to draw this up in Fusion 360 and see how it would turn out on this printer. And I also thought that since my channel is all about fountain pens, I should probably design a fountain pen and print it on this thing, which I have done as well. And when you're spending hours designing parts from scratch to get all the details just right, the spacing, the fitment, how everything goes, the feel, all that kind of stuff, it's very time consuming. And the last thing you wanna do is spend a bunch of time trying to dial in your printer to get the exposure settings just right, your wash settings just right, and your curing settings just right. All you want is the printer to make the part you made as closely and accurately as possible to what you drew up. And it seems to me that this is really what the whole Hay Gear system is about. So I sent this file from the Hay Gears workspace, they call it Blueprint. And not only did I send the file to the printer, I sent it to the wash station and the cure station. And based on the file I'm throwing at it, along with the resin, came up with the exact wash parameters and curing parameters. I'm not gonna try to do this one-handed. I can put my gloves on, pop this off, and we'll show you how this works. This is their PAU 11 resin, very much like an ABS-like. I'm gonna pop this off. I don't wanna get bits into the resin. The model's into the wash bin and it's been great, but one thing as you can see, if you're using big parts, like this has taken up maximum build volume, it's really not gonna fit in there quite well. So I am gonna put it in here. I don't know if I, I don't think I can even fit the lid on. So I'm gonna have to sort of do this one manually. So that to me is one thing they can improve is if you have a large build volume, you should also have your wash tank be able to accommodate that in case you are maxing it out like I just did. The profile is here loaded from the software. So let's just give that one a go. Yep, we're gonna stop. Oh, actually it's, it's sort of contained now. So I did most of the washing manual mode and this is what the print looks like. I went at it with the scraper as best I could to try to smooth things out, but this thing's getting tacky now. I gotta put this in the curing station. Now this thing I really do like quite a bit. Almost looks like your microwave at home. Let's pop that in there. You can of course do manual mode or like I said, you send the job and you run that profile and it's gonna let this run at 46 degrees Celsius for one full hour. That is quite a long time and I wouldn't run that on my own if I was going to manual mode, but let me give you an example. I uploaded the profile to the washer and it did a very interesting wash cycle and I uploaded it to the curing station and it did a cure that I thought was very different from what I did the first time. On the left is when I put the curing profile in myself and that's how it turned out quite a bit yellower and I just put it in whatever I thought was the appropriate amount. I didn't follow the proper profile. This ran for actually a lot longer, but it controlled the settings exactly how it should, the temperature and everything, and the result is a lot better. So I just made a couple quick updates on this design in Fusion 360. And to do this, we'll just click up on new up here. We'll do a cloud project so I can get it anywhere. We choose our machine. I got the reflex. I don't have this pulse release module. So you click none. We'll go with a general purpose model. And we're using this PAT10 transparent modeling resin right down here in the list. And then you select your resolution. We'll just stick with 50 micron. I'm just gonna click on apply and the framework is set. I'll drag in my STL file. They do have this one click slice button. I'm not gonna send it to the printer where it will repair, orient, do the supports and then slice up the file. And here's what I came up with. So here's the supports it's gonna put in, but as you can see, this is gonna create quite a few surface features on here when we're done printing. So I'm gonna change how it's oriented. They have some auto orient features so we can say minimize the projection area. And pretty obvious that's the way it would go. Now I'll do the supports. We'll click auto and then you can set your default lift height off the build plate. So this is what it's come up with now. And you can see down here, most of the supports will just be on that front face. Good thing it's a, it's a flat face. So I can just go ahead and do a little light sanding on a flat surface with that. 
If you're feeling more adventurous, we can get rid of all those and then you can go into manual mode. Now, if you go in here and start clicking around and putting your supports in and let's say you put one wrong here, it really seems to be tough to undo it. If that's in the wrong spot, it still just has me clicking everywhere and I can't really seem to hit an undo button when I'm doing my supports. There's one up here, but I can't undo my last action. So I could spend some time in going in here and putting the supports in, but it's just not something I'm great at. The other thing is I'm holding the control button right now and I'm trying to rotate the model, but the standard mouse controls don't work. You have to go up over to the side and use the big block here in order to rotate it. And it's quite cumbersome to get in there versus what you should be able to do is hold down your control key, move your mouse wheel and just move the model around, but I'm really struggling to do that. So this part, the whole support system, whether you're doing it manually or the auto, this to me is the part of the software that needs the most improvement. So I find that's where you pretty much have to do the auto generated supports. If I wanna go in and say, delete these supports, I don't think they're needed or I wanna put them somewhere else, I can't manipulate that in any way. But now that we're done, I just hit slice. You adjust your settings that you wanna do. If I wanna change it to 30 micron, I can do that. So now I'll just slice this and we'll send it to the printer. So the vat is cleaned off, so is the build plate. And there's no guesswork on where everything goes. The bottles have this cool little valve system, so you pop the cap off and just slip it down in. It's recognized the bottle. It starts to flow in, and then you have this little rubber stopper that drops down. We'll hit print and let it do its thing. Dam is retracting up, the build plate's gonna go down, and so I'll just close the cover. I have this at my office, so I'm gonna go home now and call it quits for the night. And this guy is done, so I'm gonna try this out in my car and see how well it fits. We're in the car now for the moment of truth. Here's the original one, and you can see, depending on how you put it in, it'll go right, but it's constantly going off at an angle, and it's not catching on these little tabs properly. Let's see how this bad boy fits. Oh, that's perfect. You can just drop it in, and it's perfect every single time. The biggest thing that stood out to me with the Hay Gears Reflex is the overall build quality. Just the way this cover works and it doesn't fall down, it's on there nice and secure. How the build plate is secured is great. This latch is absolutely fantastic. It's an over center style clamp design and it is rock solid. You don't have to worry about anything being flimsy. The build plate is super solid and heavy. Like you could use this thing as a weapon if you needed to. The vat is secured in a very similar fashion with these nice little clamps that go over. And this also has some significant weight to it. This is not a quick and cheaply built printer by any means. And these are little details I noticed all around. So they put marks here on all of these screws to ensure they're not turning, but also as inspection. And this appears on every bolt around the machine. We have very high quality linear guide rails and a nice ball screw. And again, you can see all those mounting bolts are inspected and marked. A nice touchscreen display, very interactive and responsive. There's two different vats on here. So there's ones that are warm, so you can preheat that. Also a one touch tank cleaning. They even supply you the tool. You just pop it in the corner. You hit the button, it does the exposure and you peel off your layer on the bottom. And even when I unboxed it and fired it up, there was a nice step-by-step -step guide that helped you level the feet and get everything set up. I'll show you that real quick. So I just recorded myself going through the initial setup. When you first get the machine going, I just popped it on the table, plugged it in, fired it up and you go through the setup. This was quite nice. You have to level off the feet, but it has a very intuitive interactive display to show you how to do it. You have to get them all green. Once you do, you're ready to go on to the next part. So it's very straightforward, very user-friendly. You don't have to be a 3D printing guru to get this thing up and running. And that sort of makes sense because this is a proprietary resin machine, which means you're supposed to be using Hay Gears branded resins. Now the downside with that is they cost more on average. Now they do seem to have some that are more competitive, but on average their resins cost more. And so you have to decide what is the best printer for you when it comes to theirs, you're paying more, but you're getting someone taking all the guesswork out. So that's that's the exchange you get. So this really seems to me that the Hay Gears is geared towards people who just want the prints to come out. They don't have a lot of time to spend troubleshooting each resin and tuning everything up. They have profiles for every single one of their resins. You pop it in the back, use their software to send the file, hit the button and you walk away. And if you're wondering, well, how long should I wash the part for it? You send the profile here, they got you covered. And same thing goes for the curing process, which is equally as important. Let's have a look at how these pen bodies turned out. These ones have only been washed and then cured. I haven't done any other post-processing sanding or anything like that. You can see the little nubbins there from the supports. But overall, these are turning out quite nice and I could do some clear 
clear coating and some other methods to get them to be very nice and clear. I've been making small little design iterations as I go along and then I reprint. For example, this feature was way too small for the snap cap, so I changed the profile and turned out very, very well. And that's been quite nice with the printer. Even the smallest little changes turn out exactly like I want on the drawing. For example, the nib and feed fit into this part of the pen, and I set that bore diameter to, I think it was 8.5 millimeters. I found it's a touch too snug, like it is quite tough to get out. You need significant uh, you know, hand strength to get it in and out. I thought, let's make it just a hair looser. So I increased it by 0.1 millimeters to 8.6, and now it's too loose. But that's the thing is, this is pulling off the details exactly like I want. The dimensions are very, very close to drawing when I do it. So I probably won't even split the difference. I might just make this like 8.52. So it's nice and snug, but just not quite as snug. And it's nice that the printer will just do that. It's reliable and is dimensionally accurate. So that's been very nice. I am looking forward to working with this Pat 10 clear resin a little bit more just to see what can be pulled off. I still need to work on some finishing. They do have a varnish that you can apply afterwards to really make things pop and make it clear. They say the transparency is 88 and a half percent, which is quite high. They say it has a medium to high toughness, which will be good for that slip cap mechanism I'm working on, which means long-term it's non-deforming. They also say long-term it has anti-aging properties and resistance yellowing so it's nice if you can get something nice and clear it stays that way I'm looking forward to playing with this a bit more and I'll be doing a follow-up video on this resin I was playing around with a more conventional cigar type pen this part here is called the section and this nib and feed typically fit into something called a collar and so I wanted to use that collar and have it thread into here I can get the thread started but there was a problem with the supports I haven't done any post-processing to get rid of those little nubbins from the supports but you can see down there in the bottom a few supports were generated on those threads. I thought I got rid of them during the wash portion, but obviously I didn't. Now they're cured and they're in there. Those threads actually turned out very well. I can just thread the section into it, but then I hit the supports and I'm toast and it's in a spot. Even if I pop it out, the thread is toast, but the thread actually turned out extremely well. I'm very impressed by that. I find just how the supports are done on the software. That is the biggest area I think the printer needs to improve. Everything else has been great. Now, printing models and figurines is something that does not really interest me, but I know there's a lot of interest uh, in the SLA printing community. So I downloaded this, uh, this model here. It's a mech type robot. I'll leave a link in the description where I got it. Thought I would try it out and I'm extremely impressed by the level of detail, the clarity. All these little features and details are quite, quite nice. I'm not seeing any layer lines or anything present on these parts. I'll assemble this in a moment, but something I thought I would talk about regarding the supports again as well. So this model, you can get just the STL, the raw parts like this. You can also get it with built-in supports. These are the supports generated by the Blueprint software. That's the Hay Gear Slicer. These are the ones that were included with the model. Now these did separate a little bit easier. Now this, this separated easy too, but they came off a little bit easier and left like fewer marks on the body for post-processing afterwards. So I, I like that part of it. However, they did fail. I had to split the model into two plates and there was this part along with a few others. It kept failing. Now the printer actually detected the failure. It told me the parts may have dropped. I let it continue anyways because it was printing in the middle of the night. So I, I woke up to the, to the alert and the parts did fall off. So I ran it again with the included supports. It fell off again. I ended up kind of running out of, of this particular resin. So I generated it again using the supports from the Hay Gears and I tweaked with some of the settings so it wasn't quite as dense and it didn't fail. It did run out of resin. There is another part that's on here and also on this leg over here. I knew I thought uh, I might run out. I might have just enough. I possibly will get lucky, but I ran out just right near the end how these parts were coming out of the vat, but they didn't fall off and they turned out really, really good, nice and clear. But this is an example of what the surface looks like. You get a lot more tiny little contact points versus here fewer as well, but that sort of makes sense why some of the parts just ended up falling off. I'm going to quickly try to glue this together and then I'll do the writing sample with the 3D printed pen and give you my final thoughts on the Hay Gears Reflex. I can't fully assemble the model because I ran out of resin because I had a few failed prints using these supports. It did complete using the Hay Gear ones, but uh, you can see the leg is a bit too short. Even though this isn't my cup of tea, I am quite impressed with these and I could see people going in with their best uh, artwork and brushing this up and giving it a very cool paint job. So that's quite neat. Let's get to writing with the pen, which is more my style. For right now, the pen is an eyedropper style. You put in a syringe full of ink, you inject it into there, 
replace the nib and feed and you're ready to go. I'll just slip that in like so, tip it down, and now you'll actually get to see the ink go in and fill up in the feed, those little bubbles. That means we're having a nice little air ink transfer. Ink is going into these little channels and we'll come out the nib and let's give it a right. So I want to wrap things up, give you my final thoughts on this Hay Gears Reflex system. First thing is the build quality on this is second to none. It's an extremely heavy printer, even from the minute you plug it in, they walk you through the whole setup process. Fantastic. Construction is extremely good. And how I showed earlier, as they are inspecting all the fasteners, this is letting me know they are really taking pride in their work and not just pumping out an average machine. The wash station works. I like how you can send the profile there, but this needs to be bigger. It could be improved a bit more, but I am a big fan of the curing station. Again, this was doing curing profiles that I would not have come up with on my own. That's the whole benefit of the Hay Gears system. These resins do cost more than regular off the shelf resins. They do have a decent selection as far as material selection goes but when it comes to colors they are lacking a bit but I imagine they're gonna come up with more colors over time and they do have a setup where you can mix your own color but that is a fairly expensive uh, resin system you have to buy more resin options would be better and if hopefully prices could come down over time that would be better too but being able to just grab the resin pop it into the machine and use the software to send the profile not have to worry about anything else just get the goo in the system hit the button it's going to wash it and cure it just perfectly for you that is a massive massive time saver i don't think the target market is so much the little hobbyist who wants to have a little printer and make some figurines and some other things at home and just have some fun i think this is really geared towards you know semi-commercial or production uh manufacturing shops prototyping shops who are really focused on design and workflow and want to have a reliable machine and not have to be troubleshooting and optimizing settings. They just put it in and out comes the parts and they're coming out very accurate. Now on to the software and this is the other area I think needs the most improvement. However, this is probably the easiest to improve because it has nothing to do with the machine. It's just some updates to software. The biggest issue I have with the software is in the support tab. You pretty much have to go and deal with the auto supports. If you're doing it yourself, I ran into nothing but problems. And even with the auto generate, it does generate them and it does a good job, but that's it. You're sort of locked into what it is. You can't really go and optimize them or adjust them or change them. And when you go into the manual mode, it, it the, the software just isn't very helpful, especially because you can't rotate your model anymore. You have to essentially get it exactly where you want, put the support, uh, accept it, rotate the model, go back at it just right, generate the support, accept it, and the process is very, very long. So this tab up here, the support tab, and uh, the auto-generated and the manual mode, I really think this is where we need some improvement in the software. But like I said, that's good news. It's just, it's some programming, it's some time, but this can be updated across the board on all the systems. It's not a machine issue. It's a little bit of a software issue. So that wraps things up. I'm actually gonna load up the machine with some more resin. I've done a few optimizations to that 3D pen. I got some other parts I just designed, so I'm excited to get that going. If you wanna see the follow-up video of when that pen model is released so you can do it yourself, stay tuned to the channel. I also did a video talking about the initial stages where I'm at too, so if you wanna learn more about that, I'll leave a link down there in the description. Big thanks to Hey Gear. I'll have all the information to the printing system I've been testing here down in the description. If you could hit a thumbs up, that'd be great. There's a subscribe button if you want to. We'll catch you next time.